Hello and welcome back to the Arcane Forge, and welcome back to Cryptober, a month of purely creepy cryptid based videos where I'm going to be illustrating and talking about the legends of various mythological cryptids that may exist in our real world. I'll talk about their lore, their origins, speculate on what they could possibly be biologically if they do exist. And I'll talk about how you can include them in your Dungeons and Dragons campaign, including, for the most part, offering homebrew resources on what you can use to put these things in your game. Or if there are various options in D&D already, I'll make sure to direct you towards those as well. Today's topic is very, very close to my heart. As someone who is living in Scotland, I'm going to be talking about arguably one of the most famous cryptids of all time. Nessie the Loch Ness Monster. So let's get started with today's video and if you enjoy it make sure to leave a like down in the little box below because that really helps us out. But let's get going. Well the Loch Ness Monster probably our largest celebrity cryptid our most famous edition of Cryptober this year. To understand the origin of the Loch Ness Monster or Nessie as she's often known you need look no further than the loch itself. Incidentally loch is the Scottish Gaelic word for lake and is commonly misinterpreted, mispronounced by pretty much every person who's not from Scotland. It's spelt L-O-C-H, which often gets pronounced as lock, as in to lock your door. But the C-H at the end is an originally Gaelic pronunciation. And if you don't want Scottish people to roll their eyes when you speak to them about Nessie or about another loch that you might be visiting, the sound you're reaching for is right at the back of your throat. It's the little flap of skin that separates your nasal passage from your mouth when you're breathing, and it's the bit that vibrates when you snore. French speakers, Arabic speakers, and so on also have this noise, but it's very common in Gaelic languages, and it's a ch, a ch noise what's called a fricative that uses the back of your throat rather than a k, which is a stop using an explosive amount of air. This noise glides through your throat with a little bit of resistance. The existence of a Loch Ness monster is still debated today. And that's because the loch itself is unusually deep, dark, and mysterious. It generates a huge sense of unease because it's very hard to peer through its inky depths. It's as deep as the Golden Gate Bridge is tall, measuring in at 227 metres, which is 755 feet, and rainwater trickling through the surrounding areas picks up an enormous amount of peat, which essentially dyes the loch a very deep and rich black colour. Before the many clans and tribes of Scotland were unified into the nation of Scotland by its first king, Kenneth MacAlpine, who was no doubt a fantastic leader, but with a name like Kenneth MacAlpine, he sounds more like a supply teacher clad in a lot of corduroy. But before he unified all of these clans, Scotland was full of many different people with a variety of wildly different cultures. When the Romans invaded Scotland, they were fought off by who they called the Pictish, or the Picts, meaning painted men, those with blue and white markings across their bodies. This is something that we can see in the massively historically inaccurate film Braveheart, featuring Mel Gibson as William Wallace, another great hero of Scottish history, but there's almost no chance that he will have painted his face in blue and white. About ten centuries before William Wallace was born is where this blue and white paint came from, although it wasn't actually paint. The Pictish tattooed their entire bodies in blue tattoos, and the Roman word Pict was their best way of describing the paint that was embedded in these people's skin. I bring up the Picts because they are responsible for what is presumed to be the first sightings of the Loch Ness Monster, and they did this way back in the 5th century where they engraved stone tablets to depict an enormous sea serpent and told tales that were later more properly established in the 6th century by St. Columba, who sent a man to swim across what was called the River Ness at that point after hearing local Picts tales of a man who had been killed by this water serpent that they had depicted. Famously, when great waves and ripples of this once still and dead loch started to move towards the swimmer who was trying to cross its obsidian depths. Columba held up the sign of the cross and commanded the beast to leave, supposedly banishing it from the loch. Whether or not Columba was successful or not isn't 100% clear because the Loch Ness Monster truly rose to fame in the 1930s 
thanks to an article in the Inverness Courier, a newspaper describing a sighting by a woman named Aldi McKay in an article called, quote, Strange Spectacle in Loch Ness. In this article, we are told, quote, the creature disported itself, rolling and plunging for fully a minute, its body resembling that of a whale, and the water cascading and churning like a simmering cauldron. Soon, however, it disappeared in a boiling mass of foam. Both onlookers confessed that there was something uncanny about this whole thing, for they realised that here was no ordinary denizen of the depths, because apart from its enormous size, the beast in taking the final plunge sent out waves that were big enough to have been caused by a passing steamer. The following year, in 1934, a photograph was taken, supposedly, of the Loch Ness Monster, the most famous depiction of any cryptid, I would argue, except, perhaps, the footage of Bigfoot, depicting what looks like an elephant's trunk, a brachiosaur's head, or a long, serpentine-like shape emerging from the water. Only its silhouette is visible against the grainy silver waves of this black-and-white photograph. It's famously known as the Surgeon's Photo, and was taken by Robert Kenneth Wilson, which showed the neck and head of the beast above the waterline. However, in the 90s, it was uncovered that this photo, this most famous of cryptid photos, was in fact a hoax, designed to get revenge on the Daily Mail after Marmaduke Wetherell, who had previously faked Nessie evidence using a hippopotamus ashtray had been embarrassed when his con had been exposed in the newspaper. By the 1940s, the creature was affectionately known as Nessie, and inspired decades of cheap tourist garbage and really, really bad children's TV. Now, this most famous image, the surgeon's photo, seems to depict what, at least until the 90s, when this photo was debunked, and potentially still after, well, it seems to depict a plesiosaur of some kind, an ancient marine reptile with a long neck and predatory behaviour. It was long speculated that perhaps Nessie might be simply the last remaining plesiosaur, or that perhaps, when continents were forming, plesiosaurs made their homes in the Scottish Isles and became trapped in the loch when their access to the sea eventually dried up evolving into something perhaps slightly different over time, but still superficially resembling a plesiosaur of some kind. And certainly the loch is deep enough, wide enough, and dark enough to house a large creature of this size, but there's always been a debate about whether or not it would be a suitable environment, and whether or not a creature like this would thrive. Plesiosaur fossils have been found around Lyme Regis and surrounding areas of Dorset in the UK which is pretty much on the opposite end of the island, all the way down at the southwest of the UK. But geologically speaking, with them being found around the UK, that means that there is a chance that plesiosaurs might have lived in areas around what would become Scotland. Plesiosaurs fed mainly on clams and snails and small fish. They had small U-shaped jaws and very sharp but quite delicate teeth that were used more to trap fish rather than bite through bone, for example. Due to its very long neck, which would have been a hindrance when trying to move more quickly through the water, it would have held very, very still, lying in wait and being more of an ambush predator rather than chasing something down, as a shark might, which doesn't seem to be completely in line with earlier stories of a more predatory Loch Ness monster which carves through the otherwise still waters and must be banished by holy men. Regardless, if this is the interpretation that you prefer of the Loch Ness Monster, and you consider it to be a surviving plesiosaur of some kind, Dungeons & Dragons has stats for plesiosaurs that you can use. Hi, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I wanted to take this opportunity to thank my patrons over on Patreon for their support, and without whom this content wouldn't exist, this video wouldn't exist. So thank you to all of you for helping me to create this content, to do the research that it takes to make them, the time it takes to illustrate all of these, record, edit, and so on. But in particular, those of you who have pledged at the Silver Archfey and above have made a massive change in my life. And this month you are Raptor Dio, Duck Quack, Nicholas G. Silver, Jonathan Foster, George Punton, Napping Camo, Yorick Beast, The Smiling Sadist, Amanda and Jake Westfall, Ethan Dibby, Nathan Stratton, Bartlegroth the Great, Braxton Hudson, Cav Manic, Matt Lichten Walner, Healthy Wolf, Peter Balf, Max Schluter, Darth Katana, Colby Monroe, Styrax, Oliver Thorvald Mellock, Ryan H, Steve Harrison, Max Copeland, Tamerling, Brandon Kerr, Dan Waterman, Dominique Jolly, Sam Hickson, AJ, Christian Palmer Smith, 
and Aldrin. Thank you so much for taking the time to help me thank those guys, and I hope this didn't take up too much or hinder your enjoyment of the video. With that said, let's get back to it, shall we? Cheers. Despite not having really much evidence for this in fossil records, D&D claims that plesiosaurs are aggressive predators and they attack any creature that crosses their path, but they're also highly curious and considered to be one of the smartest species of dinosaurs. They're large, unaligned beasts with 13 natural armor class and are a challenge rating too. They have 40 foot swimming speed and 20 foot walking speed because some species of plesiosaur have been known to actually emerge onto shallow land areas using their flippers more like feet, I suppose as a turtle might. And they're given a 3d6 plus 4 piercing damage bite attack, which seems less likely due to the brittle and narrowness of their teeth, but hey, we have dragons in D&D, so we can suspend some disbelief. There are a lot of nods to Nessie being a plesiosaur in D&D, although it's never expressly called the Loch Ness Monster. Plesiosaurs, for example, are famously found in the Lake of Mists. A misty lake seems a lot like Loch Ness. And in the Prime Material Plane, a location known as the Forbidden Plateau houses a central lake in a landlocked area that seems very fitting of Nessie. One thing that I thought was quite interesting is how similar plesiosaurs seem to be in their body shape, their diet, and to some extent, at least their bodies scale. The smallest of them reached about 15 feet, but their bodies were not that much different from leatherback turtles, just their long tails and long necks separated them. They had a similar diet, a similar habitat, and even though a turtle has more of a beak-like mouth, which is perfect for eating jellyfish, the simple needle-like cone teeth, which pointed forward, would make them a little bit better at eating fish. So if you wanted to have a more mythical encounter with the Loch Ness Monster, you could use a dragon turtle as the stat block for this creature, fitting in quite happily. One thing that I would choose to do in my campaigns instead though, rather than perhaps using a dragon turtle, or the more mundane beast-like stats of a plesiosaur provided, is to go down a fiendish route. We know that St. Columba had to summon the power of a deity to banish this creature. We know that the Picts feared it. It was a sea serpent. And serpents, like Leviathan, have often been likened to devils and indeed dragons. And alongside the supposedly very predatory, terrifying and blood-curdling nature of the Loch Ness Monster, we know that famous occultist Alastair Crowley once had a house overlooking Loch Ness in the early 19th century known as Bolaskeen House. He was known by the locals as the Beast of Bolaskeen and was named in the press as the wickedest man in the world, famous for carrying out black magic rituals while overlooking this lake of black marble. So adding a fiendish element to the Loch Ness Monster seems like something that I would really enjoy doing. And while there are lots of different visual interpretations of this creature, some of the earlier sightings that were not simply recorded as a serpent indicate a more whale-like body. I'm tempted to use inspiration from similar prehistoric creatures, and one which seems to fit the bill a little bit better, a sort of apex predator, might be the Mosasaur, an absolutely massive creature that lived 82 to 66 million years ago during the late Cretaceous period. They have far more flat skulls, shorter necks, still with this quite long tail, and resembled something like a shark, alligator type creature, still with this almost turtle-like body without a shell, but instead having more sort of tough flesh and still being reptilian. They've been found all over the world, even in Arctic areas, although they preferred to be in hotter climates, they were still believed to be warm-blooded creatures, so they could survive in the colder areas like Scotland. They were incredibly aggressive and filled a biological niche much like sharks, although they would have fed on the large shark species of the time. So my own ideas for a Loch Ness Monster seem to be more in line with something shark-like, perhaps fiendish and demonic, with a shorter neck, a larger body, and a more predatory attitude, something that would hunt out players and try to kill them, rather than wait for them nearby and munch only the little halflings or things that fit the bill of being a small fish. To that end, my personal belief is that the Devil Shark, a creature from the Creature Codex made by Kobold Press, seems to be an ideal representation of what I think, at least, the Loch Ness Monster would be. And in my illustration today, I hope to use elements from a Mosasaur, perhaps a shark, and devil-like features as well to give us this version of the Loch Ness Monster to hunt down your players. 
I'd highly recommend purchasing The Creature Codex by Cobalt Press. They're fantastic books. All of the Cobalt Press books are, and add some really great stuff to your campaigns, including what I hope will be Nessie. The Devil Shark is a gargantuan monstrosity with a neutral evil alignment. It has 16 natural armor class and can swim at 60 feet. It's got 24 strength, 14 dexterity, 22 constitution, and is surprisingly intelligent with 14 in that skill. It's resistant to fire, being something which is almost exclusively submerged in water, and is immune to cold damage, something which would fit a Scottish beast very well. It can speak Aquin, deep speech, and has telepathy up to 120 feet, and is venerated by Sahuagin for its bloodthirsty nature. Like most sharks in D&D, it has an ability called Blood Frenzy, where it gains advantage on its attacks against characters who are currently bleeding, i.e. those who have less than full HP, and it has a keen sense of smell, gaining advantage on wisdom perception checks that rely on that while submerged. It has blind sight up to 60 feet, using its smell as its main source of navigation, and can use its telepathic abilities to command sharks nearby to do its bidding if this already challenge rating 13 creature isn't enough for you. As you'd hope from a devil shark, it has a bite attack which deals 4d10 plus 7 piercing damage and grapples people who don't pass their strength or dexterity saving through to avoid it. It can swallow someone who is currently grappled in its maw and it also has a breath attack which deals freezing breath, recharging on the roll of a 5 or 6 of a d6 roll dealing 12d8 cold damage and pushing people 20 feet away from the devil shark if they fail a constitution saving throw. All in all, that's what I would personally use to get the proper atmosphere for the Loch Ness Monster, but hopefully the Dragon Turtle or the Plesiosaur stat block would also bring this creature to life for you. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed my interpretation, the lore that I've managed to find, and I hope you find a use for Nessie in your campaigns in whatever way you do. Make sure to leave a little like down below if you enjoyed this video, perhaps favourite this video so you can come back to it when you need to, and share it with all of your Scotland enthusiast friends, because I know you're all out there. And until next time, happy cryptid hunting, and have a great adventure.